So the next thing we need to do is just isolate off. Hang on a second. Just isolate off the area of the liquid, which is going to be the bottom part. If you think about the glass, this is going to be the surface of the liquid. Everything underneath here is in fact going to be the liquid. So let's delete uh, these faces at the top. And we can do that by the same technique that we did before. I'm just going to select points at the top here, change them to, by pressing the 4 key, change them into selection of polygons, and then press Shift G, and that will grow me down to this liquid surface that we've just created. So let's delete that. And now we've got a nice neat edge. And what I'm going to do is select, hit S, hit 4, and select, sorry, hit S, hit 3, four edges, and select the edge, and then hit L to create an edge loop. And then I'm going to poly extrude. I've just hit the poly extrude tool here, and that's created uh, this manipulator, which allows me to extrude in these edges. But as you can probably see, that's not looking very good at the moment. Uh, but it's going to be OK if I select here, keep points shared, and I can use average positions. And we can now see that this hasn't, in fact, disrupted those edges. We've still got a single edge. So let me move that in a little bit further. Probably that's about right. And let's finish that. And then I'm going to use an edge loop tool to put an edge loop, a couple more bits of detail in here. So I've just clicked the edge loop tool, and then I'm clicking in here to add some more detail. So in fact, we want this hole here to be the place where the liquid comes in. So I'm going to need to move it, uh, reduce its size, and move it over to one side here. So let me hit the S key, uh, escape to make sure I'm out of the poly split, S key, and then 3 to select edges. And that's selected an edge, so let's loop round. And we've got an edit stop has appeared here. So we can move this off. Let me just increase this a little bit. Got to be quite careful not to move the edges of the glass. They've got to stay exactly where they were. So that should be all right. And then change this to scale and That's probably about all right. It's going to be quite like what we want. So I'm now going to poly extrude again. And this time I'm just going to use global rather than local transforms. So let me select unselect local control. Now this is going to give us a global handle so I can move this up. And let me just start, in fact, by moving it right straight up like this. Whoops. Until it's right out of the likely display. And we can use our options here to change the number of options to, say, 10 divisions. And we can see we've now got large number of divisions here. And that's going to be useful when we come to sculpt this a little bit more. Well now we need to make this look a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to use a combination of edit tools to do this. So let's uh, just make sure we've got nothing selected. And I'm going to go along the top here, S, 3, select the edge, loop it round, uh, and then I'm actually going to 
use a translate tool. So I press T, get the edit stop come up. And I'm going to use quite a big soft radius. So this is going to affect quite a lot of that. I think we probably want somewhere down here. So again, S3, select an edge. Let's go in a bit a little bit more. We can get it. There we go. L to loop round and T again. And let's move that out a little bit like that. Uh, let's go down and explore this loop round here. So loop round. This time we're going to peak rather than let me just very slightly peek that out so that it expands a little bit. And maybe this one here. Uh, let me peek that in a little bit. Actually, let's, let's peek that out a little bit. That looks good. And then let's up here maybe peek something out here. L to loop it round, then I'm going to just subtly bring it out a bit. It gives it a little bit more shape. The other thing I might want to just do is bring the soft radius down and just change a few of these, make it a little bit more interesting over here. And that should uh, be enough for the moment for our fluid. Well, the next thing we need to do is to make sure that the surface of our liquid here at the edge corresponds still to the right position on the glass. And also to split the object into three different parts. And the three different parts we need uh, because in some cases we have the liquid sitting right next to the air, for example, the top here. Uh, in other places we have the liquid uh, sitting right next to glass, so the sides of the liquid here. And in other cases we'll have the glass right next to the air. And we need to apply three slightly different materials uh, according to each of those in order to make sure that the refractions work properly in a moment. So let's start off by recombining this with the glass. And back here we had a blast node and that was the thing that deleted the unused bits of the inside of the glass. So if I, con with that selected I hit Control C, Control V, we get another blast node and I delete non-selected and you can see I'm, I'm getting back that bit of the glass that I deleted. And now to recombine these two meshes I need to use a merge node. So let me lay one down. And let's pipe in the result of that edit that we just did on the fluid uh, with the original glass. Now, what I'm worried about, let's hit W to change to wireframe mode. What I'm worried about is that we've probably subtly moved a few of these points here. And that's going to create problems when this renders because there'll be a tiny gap between the liquid and the glass. And we don't want that. Uh, so we need to fuse those points. So in order to make this easier, what I'm going to do is go back to just the node here, the edit node. I'm going to hit S, I'm going to hit 3, I'm then going to select an edge and hit L, select the edges around here. And then what I'm going to need to do is hit Tab and start typing Group Geometry. Let's do that. And now we can see we've created a group which contains all of those points uh, that I just selected. And I'm going to call it Liquid Edge. And then let's go back up here to this 
glass node and I'm just going to put the display flag on that. So we're just getting this top bit of the glass. Again, S3, select an edge, L to loop, tab, group geometry, and we've got the points here in a group which I will call glass edge. Now back at the merge here, whoops, that's control Z, put that back, back at the merge, let's put the display bag back, display flag back here, and let's do a fuse. And I'm going to just select here in the group a parameter. I'm going to select glass edge and fluid edge, or liquid edge rather. And I'm going to increase this up, uh, say, to 0.21. So that's going to fuse together any points that are separated here. Now I need to split this all out again. Let me do that by merging in as well the other glass. Let's bring that right down. This is the rest of the glass. And in fact, I can, I can just merge that in because I've got groups to find. I can just merge that in like so. So now we need to select those three different surfaces I was talking about. So let me just do that. So let's first select the liquid where it's interfacing directly with the air. So select points. I'm going to just select a group of points here. Uh, and I did S and 2 to select points. Then I'm going to hit 4 to convert those to primitives. And then I'm going to shift G to grow this selection uh, and let me just change us uh, to flat wire shaded. By the way, if I, you did what I just did there, which was click outside of the object and lose your selection, just Control Z will bring it back again. So Shift G again, Shift G again, Shift G again, Shift G again, and that's got us to the edge there of that liquid. So let me hit the delete key. And we've got a blast node come up. Uh, and that's going to be, uh, if I s do delete non-selected, that's just going to be the top. So let me zoom in here and right click and add a null. And by convention, these nulls are named in uppercase. So let's do that. And I'll call this liquid top. Let's control C and control V, the blast node. Make sure, and, and you'll see what happened there, I still had caps lock on, so when I control C, control V, nothing happens because the hotkey is case sensitive. So let's turn the caps lock off. Control C, control V, we get a blast node. Let's uncheck delete non-selected. So we're now going to get everything else. And a bit of this is going to be glass, and a bit of it is going to be the liquid interfacing with the glass. So let me perhaps go down to the bottom of the glass and select 3, S and 3, to select an edge, loop round, convert that to polygons using the 4 key, and then Shift G to go up our glass, Shift G again, Shift G again, Shift G again. Let's just see what's going on. I know what's going on, which is I failed to merge these two bits of glass. Never mind. We can. So what's happening there is the selection's not growing. It's it's reached a barrier and it's staying there. But what I can do is select three. That's going to select all of those edges. I can then shift select an edge here, hit L, and then hit the four key to convert those all back to polygons. And we can now see that that is everything that is above the liquid. So I hit delete again, and I can 
use this. This is going to be, let's put a null on the end of this. And we can caps lock, call it liquid sides. And then with the blast node selected, caps lock off, control C, control V. Let me change that to delete non-selected. Let me now fuse this so that we don't get that break at the top. And we can see that that's worked. If we middle click here, 361 points, and afterwards 331 points. So it's merged those points at the top. And then another null here, which we're just going to call glass. So what I need to do now, I've, I've moved up to the scene level, is to extract these different components of our glass into different objects. So the first thing I'm going to do is rename this glass master. And we're not actually going to render this, this is just going to be a source for the bits of geometry we are going to render. So let me go down a geometry node and let's call this one glass. Let me dive inside, delete the file node and instead of the file mode I'm going to lay down an object merge and we can just pick from the glass master the glass like so and that's going to give that bit of glass with the this bit here cut away and I'm going to repeat the same for the three other bits uh, but I'm going to pause the video while I do that Okay, so I've done that. I've separated out our glass and our top of our liquid and our sides into three separate nodes using three separate object merges. So we can now later on assign different materials to these and we can see that, that those are all there. So let's now have a look at our ice cubes. I'm going to change into wireframe mode and let's dive into the node we set up with the ice cubes and up here I need to change this to ghost other objects so that we can see our water so we need to scale this down a bit and move it up here maybe rotate it like so and have it come like that maybe. Then the second one, let's move that just up here, rotate it like so, translate it up like so. Let me just go into a side view which I did by pressing space and three at the same time and the thing I've got to be a bit careful of is making sure that these ice cubes are not either intersecting each other or intersecting the sides of the liquid or the glass and again let's just rotate this round maybe scale scale it down We just need to move it perhaps up here. So that's sorted that out. We've now got our three cubes of ice. Well, this now looks fine, but let's go into our perspective view. I display the ice cubes. And we can see that because we've been operating just in that single view, 
uh, we've got a couple of problems here. This this ice cube here is not inside the glass. Let me just uh, scale it down. And this one here is also going to need to be scaled down. That's probably all right now. Let's set up a camera. So let's zoom in to this till we've got something quite like what we want to see. And then if I control click on the camera tool here, that will create a camera. If I want to move the position of the camera while I'm looking through it, I need to hit the camera lock button here. And then, for example, I can shift and right button to zoom in until I've got exactly what I want. Let's now add some bubbles to this scene. Uh, and what I'm going to do for the bubbles is, in fact, create a cube. So let's put that at the default position. And I'm going to call this bubbles. And I'm going to, again, make it a polygon mesh. And let's increase. Now the division's there, it'll be fine. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is use an add sop. This is not strictly necessary, but it helps understand what's going on. And in the add sop, there's an option to delete the geometry but keep the points. And now if I add, if I turn on point display, we can see we still have our points, uh, but they're down here at the bottom. And I just need to select all of them. And then let's edit them. So we're going to go up here and we're going to just move these around. In fact, let's. Uh, and I've done something very stupid here, which is that I've managed to keep the lock on while I've been zooming my camera around. So I need to set that up again. So it was about here, about that. Then take lock off, and now that will be fine. So I can now position some of these bubbles to be here. Like so. Just, just position them like so. And that should be enough for the moment. So let me select S2, select all the others, and delete them. And that gives us a few bowls. You may want to have a few more, but let's stick with that for the moment. And the next thing I'm going to do is set an attribute. And I'm going to use the point sop to do this. I'm going to add scale and I'm going to delete this and I'm going to use an expression here fit 0 1 rand open bracket dollar PT and I'm going to put it between 0.7 and 1.2 so what this is going to do is change uh, the value of this scale attribute so that it's random for each point and it will vary between 0.7 and 1.2 for each point. And the next thing I'm going to do is take a circle, uh, rather a sphere, so let's create a sphere, and then I'm going to copy it to each of those points. Now they're far too big at the moment. 
I also need to change this into polygon mesh and I'm going to reduce the radius right down to 0.1 in fact 0.05 and let's uh, change this point scale to go say from point four to one point eight and we'll now see that our bubbles are behaving slightly differently. And the other thing I need to do perhaps is just alter the shape of the bubble. So let's do that here. And what I need to do is just squash this bubble. So I'm gonna put in a transform node and I'm just gonna transform it down, squash it down a little bit. And then let's select these two points here and let's move them upwards by giving us a little bit of a soft radius. Just see whether that works. That's too much. Let's, let's try a soft radius of 0.1. Need a little bit more than that. And that gives us a little bit more of a bubble type shape. Okay, and this is an example of how powerful Houdini is because we're placing these without any, we're not having to place them and create them manually, the, 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 the Houdini is doing all the work for us. But there is a problem with these which they're all facing more or less in the same direction. And I think we need to change that. So I'm gonna, on this uh, copy node, create a stamp which I'm gonna call rot uh, Z and I'm going to have call it fit naught one rand dollar PT plus some value six four seven doesn't can be anything and I'm going to make it minus twenty to plus twenty. Let's try that and then in this transform here. I'm going to rotate about the z-axis. I'm going to say stamp. Then I need to select the point to the copy node. Then I need to give the token, which is called rot z. That's the variable we created. And then the default value, which I'm going to give as zero. And what this should be doing is randomizing the rotation of these a little bit. Let's give them a little bit more. So let's edit this expression and let's make it minus 40 to plus 40. And we can now see that those have moved considerably and they're less regular.